Hey everyone, it's Alonda. Welcome to Living on Zetbound. This is week 24 of me being on the medication. And um, it's been a week. Uh, some goods and bads. Uh, let's first start off by saying, of course, I'm in Houston and all week we have had rain. Lots and lots of rain. So it's been a little hard for me to get my walk in with my uh, weighted vest. So I figured out some other alternatives. Um, I've been using my weights, you know, the weights that sit by my TV. Yeah, those. I've been using those. <laughs> Not a lot, but I use them. Um, I've done some jump roping in the backyard. I'm still not, still not good at jump roping. I'm just not, but I'm working on it. Mm -hmm. um, I've been walking my stairs. Like I do 10, so ten, one, that's one, two, three. So I've done 10, which brought up, um, it brought up something. I'll, I'll circle back to it though. Trust me, I'm not going to forget. I will circle back to it, but I've been walking the stairs. Um, and I will say, you know, my son is home, the 22 year old. He, whenever he comes home, he's always like, mom, you need to work out. Mom, let's work out. Mom, let's this, mom, let's that. Always, every, every time he comes home. This has been the first time he's been home that one, he's seen the weight loss because he kind of saw it during, um, his time when he came in, no, no, not November, in May, when he came home, Mother's Day weekend, he kind of could see it. But this time when he came home, he saw it. He was like, dang, mom, all right, all right. And I was like, yeah, I know, right? And um, so I kind of told him what I was doing. He also kind of saw me doing some stuff. So he has not been suggesting that I do anything. So I felt real proud about that. It's like, okay, I'm doing it. Um, now he's been working everybody else <laughs> in the house. Yeah, everybody else is going through his boot camp right now. Um, one of my daughters is getting ready for wrestling. And as you know, my other two, uh, one's in Massachusetts and the one is in Chicago. I do ask for you to say a little prayer for my baby up at Northwestern, the one up in Chicago. Uh, we got a text from her this morning saying, I tested positive for COVID. They are moving me to a single suite. Um, it's interesting, knock on wood, no one in our house has had COVID. No one. Um, it's, it's been real interesting that we have not, I've had lots of family members get COVID, but this, yeah. So, and the fact that she's up there kind of freaked us out. And, you know, there was some discussion of do we go up there? Even if we go up there, what are we going to do? We can't do nothing. She's quarantine in a dorm room and she's not the only one that that is helpful it was um, about five people in her little group that all contracted it so they're going to test her again on Sunday um, she's just really congested right now and extremely tired um, every time we call her she's like sounding really really tired and um, yeah so if y'all would just say some prayers for her because this mama bear is having a moment, stress, a little stress there. Um, but I will say this week, as far as my weight loss, circling back, uh, it's, it's been pretty good. I, I've been pretty happy. Now, um, I don't even know how to say it. Let's just talk about weight. <laughs> so, you know, last week I was pissed because I'd been walking with the weighted vest and, you know, I had like, 0.6 weight loss and I was like what the hell so I was not very happy last week um this week I've really kind of stepped back to a habit where I was watching the scale every day I was stepping on it stepping on it stepping on it um sometimes we're closed sometimes without clothes I just wanted to see what was going on because this is the old Alonda. well not really the old Alonda, but many of you know when it goes to regular weight loss and you're trying so hard and you're making these changes and you're doing this and you're doing that and you're not seeing it on the scale, it can be very frustrating, very, very frustrating. And so, you know, last week I was frustrated. I, I, you know, in my mind, I was doing good. I should have seen some big numbers and I didn't. So my body was doing whatever it wanted to do. But this week I did see a big change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So last week I started at 221.3 as of 23 minutes ago. 
I am 217.5. So I have lost 3.8 pounds this week. Um, my overall weight loss journey from February 7th to where we are today, which is, I don't know, oh, July 26th. Um, I have my little note over here. I've lost 47.2 pounds. I, yeah, I'm going to take that and I'm very excited about it. 47.2. Um, usually when I lose weight, or at least when I was on Syndexta, all I lost was 40 pounds. And then I stuck. I got stuck at 40 pounds. Um, I got down to 180 and then I just rode 180 for months. So as people would say, I had to stall. I did. I had to stall. And I could not get past that stall. It was so frustrating. Um, hence why I ended up getting off of it, but I still have one box in the refrigerator. Um, and the stuff is just too expensive to just throw away. <laughs> don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. My son actually brought it up the other day. He was like, what are you doing with this? And I was like, mm, I don't know yet. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to just hold on to it for right now. Um, we did have a little bit of stress, not only just this morning with the whole, I have COVID and I don't feel good and I can't, you know, be a mom right now. Um, my 17 year old, um, who I took with me last, I guess like three weeks ago, um, to look at some colleges. She still don't know what she want to do with her life. She still don't. And that's fine because she's a young child, but we kind of need to have some, some, some kind of guidance onto a path. And sometimes she says she wants to go to college. She spent the last six weeks at a rice um, class, like every day, every day. I was either driving her up there or getting her as close to the bus line so she can get off. We just, ooh, ooh, this baby. This baby don't know what she want to do with herself. And this mama is having a hard time with it. She backstory. Um, my twins have been with me for five years. We, I say we, I adopted them at 14. Prior to that, they spent eight years in foster care and she is the younger of the identical twins. Her big sister has always took the reins, always. So my other baby, she just followed whatever big sister said, that's what she did. Well, big sister is living her best life this year. And as you know, she hasn't been here for two months. So little sister is having to step up and it's scary for her. And on Sunday, she and I tried to have a little heart to heart conversation. And I told her, baby, I know it's scary. Everything I'm doing in my life right now is scary. I mean, it literally is the medication scary. The working out is scary. The changing my, my food habits is scary. Everything is scary. And that's, that's to be expected. I'm not asking for you to say you want to be a doctor and that's going to be your next 50 years. But we need to have some idea of what you like, what you want to do, <laughs> what colleges you want to apply to, because all that costs money. Every application to a college costs money. And you know, I'm working on that budget. Me and that budget are, we tight, we tight, tight. So, um, yeah, this week I, sh I straight took a behind up to the recruiter office. I was like, let's look at every one of your possibilities. Every option that's out there, let's figure this out. And she was pissed. <laughs> she, she was, I'm going to show you a picture of what her face looks like in a moment. Um, she held that face for 45 minutes while we spoke with the recruiter. Um, she didn't speak to me for two days, which was fine. You know, sit there and let that stuff marinate. But um, this morning when she heard about our other daughter having COVID, she started kind of talking a little bit. She was like, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to go see her? And I said, oh, you worried about her? What about your life and your future? And so it opened up another conversation. So that has been stressful. It has been stressful. Um, stressful for her, for her, stressful for me, just overall stress. Now on a good note. Um, I did go to a meeting for teachers this week and I walked in and somebody who hadn't seen me since she said it was October. I think I saw her in January to be honest, but she saw the weight loss. She was like, dang, what are we doing? So I told her what I was doing and 
you know, we kind of talked about the insurance part. And there is something about the insurance I do need to address with y'all, but I'll do it on a whole different video. Um, it actually happened during our hurricane. I got a text message and it just started a whole loophole that ended up very, very, very frustrating. And I think I mentioned on another video, let me deal with the insurance and try to figure out what's going on. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. Let me just say real quick and easy. I got a text from Sam's that said my medication was ready. This was July 9th and that Zepbound was gonna be zero out of pocket. Sure did, got that text. That's why on that Tuesday when we had no lights, we ran to Sam's because hey, I got a text, so Sam's must be open and we spent two hours in Sam's just walking around and eating so we can be in some coolness. When I finally got to the pharmacy, she told me it was a glitch in the system. Um, that somebody had sent the information to the system saying that my prescription was going to be free, but she couldn't find who sent it. And then we started going down a rabbit hole. Um, before we left, she had put it back for $550 using the savings card. So her argument was, um, you know, it could have had something to do with the hurricane. We don't know. But if they sent it to the main pharmacy line for Sam's, then there's some, some documentation somewhere in that we just had to get it in hand, whether it was my, my doctor's office, um, Join Fridays, when I was with Join Fridays. I'm no longer with Join Fridays. Um, one, because I don't have the issue grabbing the medication right now, but also two, I'm budgeting. I, I can't let that money go right now I can't, I can't let $99 go <laughs> and I'm not, you know, doing anything with it. So, um, I did, you know, pull out of join Fridays for right now. Um, I might still get back on it after six more months. So let me see how I can work this budget with the new school year. But long story short, we don't know where the information came from. And I've tried all week, actually last two weeks to figure out where the information came from and no one knows. So it actually could have been a glitch in the system. What I hate is that I was so excited and filled with joy that I was crying all over the place because I thought my medicine was about to be free just to have it ripped out of my heart and said, oh, it might be a glitch in the system. Yeah, yeah. And she truly did fix it because when I go into my Sam's, it was saying Zetbound next refill July 26th pay zero. Now when I look at it, it says 550. Yeah, so that's been a little frustrating. Um, on a good note, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's my finger trying to heal, y'all. It's trying to heal. Um, and I have to take the Band-Aid off so it can actually start to scab. So it's scabbing. I found this at Aldi. It is a collapsible, um, storage container and okay so this is it i've messed with it several times but i still haven't figured out how to really do it do it okay so this is how deep it is let's see if i can use my hands okay so at least palm size depth okay and it's collapsible okay so here's this part and then it comes with this part aha yes so there's this little part here, and then these little parts, and it all stacks into here, you see? And it goes right back to being collapsible. Yay! Now, this is why I'm needing help, because I normally take salads for lunch. That's like my go-to staple. Um, I put some salads with some shrimp or chicken or whatever protein we had for the night. But I want to do something other than just eating protein bars. Um, so I'm thinking like hummus and chopped carrots or hummus and chopped cucumber. Um, I think I can put grapes in this. We kind of played around with this one. I think I can 
do about eight to 10 grapes, even though I only eat like six of them, but eight to 10 grapes. But can y'all give me some suggestions on what snacks? Um, I did do a little thing of popcorn. That was funny. It was like six little kernels of popcorn. I can do pretzels and that gave us about 10, 10 in this one. But they're, they're, they're tiny, but palm size, I guess. Do y'all have any suggestions? Because I start back work next week. I start back work next week. <laughs> so I've got to have a plan. Um, so yeah. So this is my happy thing this week. I was so excited when I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh. Speaking of which, um, I don't know if anybody else is doing this, but I'm finding myself spending more and more time in the grocery store. Not shopping per se, but just reading stuff. Like the other day, I was probably looking at the dairy for about 10 minutes, it felt like. It was long enough for old boy to um, start recording me. Because he was like, what are you doing? You're like talking to yourself. I don't have the record. He has it, and right now they're all at the movies. But um, he was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm reading. I need to know how much protein's in this and how much sugar is in this. Um, and then we went on to another aisle and I was reading in there. And so what normally would take like a 20 minute grocery store trip just to pick up odds and ends. We were in there for a full hour because I kept reading stuff. Oh, and I also found, um, I'm going to show it. Oh, by the way, this, this is one of my Odiva goodies. Um, this is one of my um, less than 200 pound outfits. Yeah, when I'm, and I have this in blue, black, and like a reddish wine color. Um, but yeah, I got it on, y'all. It's on. I don't know how I'm gonna get myself my injection with this on today, FYI. Um, but these, I haven't tried them yet. But I was reading a lot about it. Um, 20 grams of protein. Yeah. I don't know. Anybody else spending time in the grocery store? Just reading stuff? Or is that just me being me? I don't know. Um, but yeah. And then on the back it talks about snacks to go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. I just wondered, am I the only one? Last thing before I, sh you know, jump out, and I'm sorry, this video is a little long right now. Let's get my camera right back. Um, so, like many people, I have different social media accounts. I do. Um, YouTube is where I do all this, and then I have an Instagram that is nothing like YouTube, like it's just videos it's just and it's like little short videos so some of the videos the shorts here are over there but this is my main i think i have like 35 followers over there something like that um but that one allows people to um direct message me so um i've had two people in the last maybe three weeks ask me the same question and i realized i was being a bad lady and i did not give y'all an update. So that's what I'm gonna spend the last couple of minutes doing. Um, like I said, I started this journey February 7th and six weeks in, my co-parent, significant other at the time, informed me on my birthday, mind you, March 18th, that he had been having a extra, he had been having an affair. He had been having an affair and he just wanted to tell me and i was hurt um matter of fact that was that was a film day so i don't even remember which episode it was but um i knew i had to film and i just thought i'd push through it and yeah i was hurt um almost broken but i was definitely hurt i knew something was going on so that part wasn't really a surprise i am very surprised that he was up front and told me because he don't like to share anything. He don't like to share nothing, 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 nothing. It's like, come on, tell me something. How was your day? How was the day? 
Now keep in mind, I've known him 24 years, so some of that stuff I just know and I just deal with. But um, the cheating, oh yeah, we had an issue with that. But like I said, I was very grateful that he told me and that put me on a path to try to figure out my future. And at the moment, you know, I was telling everybody, we're leaving, I'm selling the house, and I'm like, I'm gonna do this, and I'm doing that, and I'm taking the kids. And then when I looked at my budget, I was like, you have a choice. You can either stay on your medication, or you can completely disrupt um, the family and move almost 45 minutes away to a place where a single mom of four kids could be. Okay, um, two of my kids actually go to a school by where he works, which offered another issue that two of my kids may not be able to come with me because of their schools. Um, and they, they've applied to these schools, they're specialized schools for them. And so again, was his issue, his issue was about to just disrupt our entire family. So. Um, I had to think long and hard, long, long, long and hard. Um, I'd already started putting some things, some wheels in motion, but I had to think long and hard. Um, he and I did a brief conversation, because again, he don't talk. We had a brief conversation. We spoke with um, a therapist, which was more like a mediator lady, and we kind of came up with a plan. So I am still living upstairs with my 10-year-old. He and I are roommates. <laughs> we live in our best life up there. Um, and we are just co-parenting. That is what we're doing. We are putting what our priority was, which is the kids in the forefront. Um, I do know shortly after he told me, um, they broke up. I can only assume that, you know, she didn't want to take the job of being a stepmom of six with um, him being a benefit. I, that's just me thinking. That's just me. Um, maybe she didn't see that on the job description. Mm, I don't know. But um, <laughs> they're no longer dating. I don't know if he's replaced her with anyone. I don't know. To be honest, I don't even care. I have become a little dis desensitized to the whole situation of him. And I am solely focused on me. Top priority and my kids second priority so i just wanted to clear that up because like i said i've had two people um reach out on instagram and they were like Alanda, are you okay what's going on with the family because i guess you know in, in my videos i, I call him my co-parent the other guy old boy whatever name just floats to the top and so significant other no no definitely not significant he's just the other one but um our goal is to raise our children and every one of them is aware. I mean, you have to be. I'm going upstairs every night, which brought up the stairs. So yes, I can handle stairs now because I walk them every night and I come down them every day. And if I need something, I go right back up those stairs and I come right back down. So the stairs and I are no longer enemies. We are friends. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's where we are. We don't really share what's going on um, unless it's pertaining to the children. Yeah. Plus this year we have three graduations. Um, the two twins and then my 25 year old, or he's not 25, Lord help me, he's 22. And if we were to get our own place, we would both struggle financially for proms, um, graduations, my son, he's graduating from Maryland, and we have to get to Maryland. So that would be a financial struggle um, as well. So that's one of the things we did talk about with the mediator lady is how do we move forward where I'm not giving him the death glare and he's not avoiding me. Um, because for a moment, he was avoiding um, two of my kids, the twins. He was avoiding the twins. Um, and I say avoiding them. Because I spent so much time with them, because they go to school where I work, he didn't know how much they knew. And so it just made him uncomfortable um, trying to tell them something when he knew he was in the doghouse. So um, 
eventually the four of us had a little set down. They had already known what was going on, but they hadn't heard it from him. And so he had to basically, in his words, because, you know, again, he does not talk. <laughs> he does not talk. Um, his words. I just didn't know how to deal with y'all when I was dealing with stuff I shouldn't have been doing. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. Um, which they're older, you know, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> we are co-parenting. We're raising kids, and that's the gist of it all. So I hope that answers your question. Um, in 11 months, we will revisit and see what happens. Hopefully, in 11 months, I'll be in maintenance, not being on zip bound per se, or maybe my insurance will pick it up. Who knows? Who knows what will happen between now and June of next year? I, I can only imagine that I'll be finer than I am today. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to losing weight. I love losing weight. And do y'all see it? It's almost gone. I told y'all, my, my chin, this one, my second chin, you know, when I first started recording here, I had four chins, right on here and here, and then this one and that one. And I told y'all, I said, this one is going to stay around. It'll be the last thing to leave. Um, but it's starting to go. So, see you later. <laughs> I hope y'all take care. I'm so sorry that this video is longer than expected, but I did want to just update you. Um, because if two of y'all had questions and y'all were around, you know, my OGs, as I say, y'all were around from the beginning where I was having my emotional moment. Um, yeah, I haven't really talked about it in the last five months. So that's where I am. I am co-parenting and we are, you know, continuing to pay bills so I can stay on my zip down. So yeah. So I hope y'all do well. Um, it is still sprinkling outside, so I don't know. But it's a quiet house, so I'm going to do something. <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Hey, everyone. Seriously, I was about to do it again. I was about to upload the video and not give myself the shot. So um, I need to do that. Yeah, I need to do that. Um, I think I know how I'm going to give the shot without you all staying on my business, I think. So I've got my alcohol pad. I am going to do the right side again. Um, as you know, I lost 3.8 pounds on this side. I kind of like her. <laughs> so I'm not going to go exactly... Okay, I'm not going to go exactly where um, I was last time, but I'm going to go close to it. Okay. And um, I haven't really talked to y'all about this because I keep forgetting, but the last time I gave myself the shot in the thigh, it bruised. Um, my thigh turned kind of purple green and it stayed that way for six days six whole days uh this is my last injection and 7.5 so 7.5 last one but um so i'm gonna have to leave my thighs alone my doctor thinks it's probably because i'm gaining muscle there um and i may have hit some vein forget what she said um but yeah she thinks maybe i hit a vein that is in that area so one two three oh sorry didn't turn the button okay here we go one two three but yeah she said um she thinks i hit a vein come on girl do it one two three okay um she thinks i hit a vein or so something and that probably caused the bruising because most bruising should go away within two to three days. And mine stayed for, um, like I said, six days. Little bitty dot. But 
Past that, we are good. All right, we'll go to the kitchen, put this in my sharps container. And now for real, for real, this is it. I'll see y'all later. Y'all take care.